low level gang what is up in this video we're going to talk about interrupts and by the end of the video you'll be able to write an interrupt service routine or isr for the at mega 328p bare metal without using the arduino ide or associated libraries if you haven't already hit that subscribe button and go follow me on twitch i'll be doing short form tutorials here and longer form projects and some gaming over there interrupts are an effective way of getting code to execute out of band from your main program when certain events happen. Instead of sleeping the CPU for a thousand milliseconds or pulling for a sensor to go off, using interrupts, you can, as the name implies, interrupt the code flow of the CPU to handle something important. In this video, we'll use the interrupt for timers on the Atmega 328P to blink an LED on and off every second without using sleep. Okay, so let's get coding. Here you see I have a basic main.c shell file, no important code there. Uh, that'll be the code file that we actually write our program into, so get that ready. And then also I have a make file here. I've done this in previous Arduino bare metal tutorials before, mm -hmm. uh, but I'll kind of go over at a high level what this make file does. Essentially, you use the uh, AVRGCC program to build your C file into an AVR compliant you know, binary format for this chip. And then you have to use the AVR obj copy tool to convert that elf that it creates into an ihex file. We're gonna call that ihex file main.hex. Mm -hmm. And then finally, we use the AVR dude, AVR flash burning tool mm -hmm. to use the Arduino bootloader spec and write our main.hex file to the flash pointed to by the device that lives at this path, right? So this is the USB port that happens when I plug my Arduino into my computer, right? And just, this is the default, but it's good to specify it. The baud rate is a uh, 115.200. So pretty standard stuff. And just to test that it all works, I can say make build and I can say make burn and it converts that binary to an IHEX file, uses AVR dude. And then we get prompted with the, uh, the burn of the file. And I'll put my camera, I'll show you guys real quick that now I've burned that flash file to my device and there's nothing happening. There's no LEDs blinking, there's nothing happening. So we're, we're, good, we're at a good default state. So in this file, like I said, in the previous part of the video, we're gonna be making a timer interrupt happen at a one second interval to blink an LED. This is different than the normal way you do this where you use a loop and, and sleep, right? An interrupt completely preempts the instruction counter of the Arduino and says, hey, this is more important. So we're gonna set that up in the following way. When doing any kind of AVR programming, you first want to include the AVR.io or the io.h header. Uh, that'll explain to the compiler where all of the ports and data direction register stuff is so that we can actually turn the LED on and off. And then obviously we're doing a, an interrupt tutorial, so we need to include the interrupt.h header. That describes to the compiler where to find files for interrupt service routines, right? So if we do an interrupt, we need to tell the, uh, the board what to do during that interrupt, and that is called an ISR, or an interrupt service routine. Okay, so now in our main file, you know, we need to first enable the LED to be turned on. And the way we do that is we say that the data direction register for port B, turn on the bit uh, BV DDB5. So, you know, pin 13, which is the pin on the Arduino that the, the LED lives, is actually on uh, port B, port 5. And we're going to turn that bit on, so now it's known as an output, right? So this enables pin 13 to be written to. Okay, so now it gets to the actual timer part, right? So when you're setting up timers, there are various registers inside the Arduino that describe to you bits you can set to make the timer operate in a certain kind of way. We're going to be using an overflow timer that will flip an ISR every time a certain internal value is overflowed, right? And that overflow value is called T counter one. And we're gonna set it to zero right now. This is actually the wrong value. We're gonna change that and I'll show you the math on how to change that in a minute. But for right now, we're going to set the default overflow value to zero. So basically what's happening is every predetermined interval, the computer is incrementing this value by one, right? Right now, the chip's processor is operating at 16 megahertz. We don't want to count this up every 16 megahertz because that's actually way too fast. We can't get the granularity of time that we want to one second using 16 megahertz. So we need to actually downscale that by what's called a prescaler. So we'll enable the prescaler on the timer 
by using the timer control register for timer one, part B. And I'll show you the data sheet and have the data sheet in the description below. And basically what we can do is we can set a prescaler value, and I'll show you what that means in a second, using this line of code, CS10 and CS12. So what this does is it sets the prescaler to 1024. So basically, instead of the counter ticking every 16 megahertz, it ticks 16 megahertz divided by 1024. So we have to count to 1024 before we actually tick up, right? So now our effective clock rate is 16 megahertz over 1024, which is about 15625. And that, that number is very important. We got to hold on to this and keep that in our head for a little bit. Okay, so 15625 hertz is our new effective clock rate. Okay, so now that we've pre-scaled the timer to get it into a granular time control that we want, we now need to set another part of the timer control register to make sure that we're only doing overflow operations. You can actually do a lot of cool stuff with timers. You can do comparison timers and like uptick, downtick timers. All we're gonna do is an overflow timer. So we need to disable all other features of the timer with this line here. This sets basically, hey, don't enable any other features. And then all we have to do now is the timer control register one. We need to enable the overflow interrupt. So timer overflow interrupt enable one, right? This allows the CPU to be interrupted by the overflow condition of this counter. And then finally, now that we've enabled that interrupt in our controller, we need to say SEI or set interrupts enabled before, or set enable interrupts rather. Before we ran this line of code, we enabled the timer interrupt, but the entire CPU wasn't able to be interrupted. It would not have responded to a single ISR. Now at this point, after this line, it is able to be interrupted. And now we're gonna say an infinite loop where nothing happens, right? So essentially, this is going to run infinitely and do nothing. There will be knobs in here, and all it will respond to is this interrupt triggering the CPU to do something. So the question is, what does it do, right? Where do we actually send the processor to go? So what we have to do actually is describe an ISR, or an interrupt service routine, that is the ISR for the timer one overflow vector. Oh, not prescaler. So this function is what's going to get ran when this counter gets overflowed to 65536, right? So I'll describe that here. This has a max value of 65536, oh, three, or 35 rather. So when it gets to 65536, it will actually overflow and trigger our ISR. And this is the point in the code where we're gonna actually flip the bit that changes the LED, right? So port B, is equal to, or X4 equals, so we're gonna flip it, right? We're gonna go one to zero, or zero to one, the bit for uh, port B5, right? And then we have to reset our counter to some value. And again, zero is the wrong value. We just need to set it, we need to set it back. So if we don't set it back, the timing will be off. Okay, so in theory, if I flash this to the board, it will make the LED flip on and off at some rate. The problem is our goal here, goal is to, flip LED every second. This is not going to be every second, right? Because if I said the effective clock rate is this times a second, uh, 15625 hertz, right? But we wanna go and make it a second, that's not how the math is gonna play out. The way the math actually plays out to get it to be a second is the max value of the counter, 65535, minus the effective clock rate divided by the prescaler. I'll take this and I'll copy it down here too. I'm gonna to pound to find the clock rate as well. CPU is 16. Because what's happening is we need to preempt the timer to only have this many clock rate left to go, right? If that's the clock rate per second, we only wanna count that many times before the clock goes off, before the timer goes off. So we say, max value minus the clock rate divided by the prescaler. And again, the prescaler right now is 1024. So this effectively, this gets us a number around 49,000. That is the default timer for the chip to take. So essentially set the timer to some default value, enable an overflow interrupt, 
let the interrupt run, put the board into an infinite loop, and then once that interrupt gets triggered, we go here to the ISR and XOR the LED and set that bit either on or off. So we're gonna make it real quick and test it out. And boom, there we go. Our LED is now blinking on and off using an ISR or an interrupt service routine to handle the overflow of a timer in the CPU on the Arduino. Guys, if you liked that video, if you learned something, or if you just, you know, wanna, wanna help me out, hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitch, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Take care.